so then when they're doing that, that action or whatever it is, I can recall all the information from that thing. So I'm not even looking or thinking about what the information itself is. I'm creating an association and storyline yeah. based on my own, my own associations. So anything becomes personalized learning. And it's crazy how you actually can remember that. Yeah. Um, you know, I've done it. I did that when I was writing my essays at university for my exams. And um, I don't know if I shared with you, but at school I never particularly excelled. I knew I, was, I wasn't thick though, but I never really excelled at school. And, um, and it wasn't until I started studying the brain and I started studying kind of accelerated learning and all these techniques, just as I was going to university. And I remember, like, literally, like, I mean, I almost got a first. I say almost. I didn't. I got a 2-1. But this is someone that, you know, my mom didn't even want me to go to university. <laughs> she didn't think I was intelligent enough. Yeah. But just through using these techniques. And when I was sat in my exam and I was writing an essay, and we're talking about a really long essay here. I can't, look, I can't remember how many words an essay is. Um, but you just, I had these little elaborate stories in my head. Like you have these superheroes, you know. And it, the story that you create or the picture, the visual image that you create in your mind could be completely different from the history essay yeah. that you're writing. So in a way, sense. it just makes it more exciting, but it makes sense. <laughs> and then the words just flow. Yeah, it's it's such a more creative way of working and an interesting yeah. way of remembering things. Yeah. And um, I was also not the best student, I'll be completely honest. I skipped a lot of school because I really didn't enjoy it. Mm. I thought that I was a bad learner as well, to be honest. So when I was in school, I, I got really, really bad marks. I was like D's and C's and stuff like that for most of high school. So I just didn't go a lot of the time as well. So then I thought that I was, I don't know, somehow challenged when it comes to learning. And um, mm. then I just had this conversation with my mom two, three days ago. She was like, who would have thought that you would be the one out there teaching people how to learn when I couldn't even get you to go to school? <laughs> it's fascinating, isn't it? And it's like Tony Bazan says, and I'm probably going to quote him a lot during this because he hears me like my idol, but it's all about knowing how to use your head. And I'll never forget the time that I first picked up his book and I read the back, the back of the book and it said how he can make you, you know, a C student into an A student. And he gave an example of somebody who was, um, wanted to go to, I think it was either Oxford or Cambridge University, which is one of the most prestigious universities in the UK, and you will only get in if you've got like A grades, like good A grades. And he wanted to go, but he was a C student. With these techniques, knowing how to use his head, he was able to get all the grades that he needed to go to this prestigious university. And I remember reading that and yeah, thinking, wow, if this is true, then I need to know how to do this. You can do it, I can do it. Exactly, and that's when my journey started. It's amazing, actually. It's really cool that you discovered um, Tony at such a young age as well. So a lot of people just think that how your brain is is how your brain is. And mm. there's no changing that. So when we're in school, we're not taught how to learn, which is, in hindsight, ridiculous. It should be a prerequisite to any sort of learning. It should be, this is how you learn and retain and understand information, and this is how to use it. But it's never really happened in school. So that's like one of our main sort of issues, uh, main uh, visions for the future is to bring it globally into the school system. Wow, that's incredible. Because <laughs> um, education is an area that I'm very, very passionate about. And, and like I say, these techniques being taught in school, I think it would just be a complete game changer. Are you when going for that word? I was like, yes. <laughs> It would be a complete game changer yeah. for um, for young people. Some of the things like um, we tell clients is it's like having cheat notes but inside your own head. Yeah. So um, there's a couple of the, the techniques that are sort of one of the most powerful ones that I personally use. It depends on what you like and what works best for you, but there are certain things that work really well for everybody. So um, if you think about what were you wearing two days ago? No idea. Try, try and remember. Try and remember what I was wearing two days ago. So talk me through the process. Where's your brain going right now? I'm 
just trying to remember. I'm trying to think back like two days ago, what I was doing. What day are we on today? Today is Tuesday. Tuesday. So two days ago was Tuesday, Monday, Sunday. I was working from home. Okay. So I was probably wearing... Um, yeah, I think I was just wearing my shorts and t-shirt with no makeup. Cool. So what you just did was um, exactly what I wanted you to do. So you started thinking about where was I, which is location, mm -hmm. one way the brain works. The second one was what was I doing, which is telling yourself a story about what was happening. And then the third one was what was I looking at or what did the area look like, which was images. So mm -hmm. picture, story, location. So that's essentially how the brain works in almost every area. <laughs> so then you can add different elements, like you can add in different uh, senses, like kinesthetic, auditory, uh, auditory, olfactory, gustatory, or visual, whatever you want, but it still works in the same sort of way, image, story, location. So there's one technique that we use called memory palace. And so it's literally, this room could be a memory palace. That door could be a place to store information, barrel over there in the corner, which you can't see in the video, mm. we use to store all the information on the table or whatever it is. So when I'm either recalling lots of numbers or I'm doing, um, I'm reading a book, I can turn all the main concepts of a picture, of a, of a chapter into different pictures and then I can place them around my room or my house or wherever I am. So then when I start going around the room, I can say, oh, what was in this corner? Uh, that was this person doing these things which represent this information. So I was reading a book called Psychology of Persuasion, and for whatever reason, in Persuasion, Leonardo DiCaprio pops up in my mind, you know, in The Wolf of Wall Street. So he pops up in my mind, and then so he represents one chapter for me. And from that chapter, I can add a little cut on his forehead, which to me represents self-deprecation. So if you self-deprecate slightly, people start to trust you more because they don't have, they don't think you're trying to hide anything. So then you can also put him pointing to the future, which for me means future pacing. You imagine the future, you imagine yourself from the future and the perspective, and it's very powerful persuasion technique. And then how he's dressed, his like presentation, how he moves, his proxemics. So I can start to unwrap an entire chapter or more of information from one person, one person, and I can place it right there. So then there's ten points of a chapter right there in that spot. And then I can just recall that at any point in time. Mm. So then I walk to the next place in my room, and who's there? For me, it could be the Hulk, it could be anybody. <laughs> and whatever information you put into the person then will be recalled because you just put, literally put the information into that person. Mm. So that's one powerful, powerful technique, and I can demonstrate it to you with numbers really quickly if you like. Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, so I want you to just, on a sheet of paper here, mm -hmm. write down any two digit numbers. So just list it down, one, two, three, like that, any two digits. Two digits. Two digits. How could many? Like Twenty-one. It could be uh, how many numbers? It could be. Uh, let's just do ten right now. There's no number guys. Please don't. They're all supposed to be random. For the people uh, looking at this on video, I'm just holding that up there. For the people watching on YouTube. Just gonna take a second. Okay, so we've got are you putting that up at the top? Yeah. Okay, you just keep cool. Okay, I'll get it in a second. Got it. Okay. So do you want to have a little bit of a thing? So I think it's going to work. Okay. So we should have one, two, three, two, five, eight, 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 uh, two, one, one, three, zero, one, seven, eight, seven, one. Perfect. Yeah, do it backwards. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, that's incredible. So that's one um, demonstration. That's only, it's only got uh, nine digits, nine numbers there. There's nine so, numbers, yeah. yes. You could ask me what number six is, and I could tell you, for example, which is one, three, or okay. number three is, which is five, eight, or what number nine is, which is seven, one, two, right? So like, I can tell you, based on location in my mind, what number I'm looking at, and I'm actually turning every number into an image. Okay. So for me, there's a system called the matrix method, and so it turns every single number into a letter, and then you convert the letters, both letters, into a word. So one, two would mean the uh, T and N, so ten. So I'd imagine just here, for example, somebody is tanning on a tan bed or something like that. Mm. So that's number one. And then number two, three, two would be man. So I'd imagine some big macho man over here in the corner. So mm. that's three, two. And the next one would be love. I would imagine just a magic, massive love heart there. Mm. And then so I can go, number one was one, two, three, two, five, eight, la, 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 all the way around, and then backwards, the nearest number to three is, I could go from here to here, and I could find it. So that's a technique. I'm not remembering by photographic memory or some crazy thing, gifts that I've been given from birth. It's something that anybody can learn how to do. So it's using the same thing, picture, story, location, to get you try to find what you were wearing your clothes with before. Mm. <laughs> So there's certain ways that the brain works, and there's ways to hijack that um, the way that it naturally works into creating long-term retentive information rather than just la 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 repeat 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 repeat. Right. Yeah. Wow. I find it totally fascinating. Totally fascinating. Just kind of listening to all of this, and um, these are techniques. Whilst the technique of the word association, I, I. I can relate to, and I can remember that that's what I did. Yeah, like the, a, putting them in the different, well. putting them in the different corners of the room. That's something that is totally new to me. Yeah. Well, memory palace is actually ancient Greece techniques. So there's a guy called Simenides who was hosting a party, and he left out. And he went outside to make a phone call or something in ancient Greece, mm -hmm. and um, anyway, the whole room collapsed. So then people were crushed and killed at a table. asking because they couldn't identify bodies so they're asking who was who and you can only remember by looking at the place where they were sitting and the people who were sitting in that certain position that's how he identified the people so that was the birth of the memory palace which is what i'm using here but i'm storing information in a different sort of way wow so it's not a new phenomenon a new it's technique. something that's being used for like centuries and centuries yeah. it's old years old and we're adapting yeah. it yeah Wow, that's incredible. How could, this is all good and well, learning these numbers, but how, how would they relate to our everyday life? What would be the advantages yeah. of that? So um, these are the things you don't necessarily need. So remembering, recalling lots of numbers, backwards and forwards, you don't really need it. It's more of a demonstration thing. However, the actual training process of it is, it has carry-on effects. So even without me trying to show you how to use it for learning, it has an effect where it comes down to your creativity gets increased, your focus goes, your skyrockets, and then the way that you actually associate and find information in your brain, it starts to become faster and faster. So when I do this sort of stuff, I've noticed so many different areas of my life just improve naturally, which is a Pygmalion effect, where you increase an area and the rest kind of comes up with it. Mm. So when I started doing it, I realized I could focus better in conversations, I could recall what was happening in conversations, and I wasn't even really trying to use techniques. Once you start using techniques for like deliberately and intently focusing on learning, then your retention just goes through the roof. And it's just, it makes, makes so much it my life so much easier when you just have your brain switched on and just working faster. <laughs> and you just start creating all this. By the way, it starts creating some really weird stuff in your mind. But you learn to start to not judge those things that just mm. like randomly happen. Yeah, because you're thinking, oh my God, did I really think of that? Yeah, That's crazy. But it's fine. It's like, it's, um, your brain just creates an association. You don't need mm. to worry about what it is. If it pops up quickly, it means your brain will remember it faster. Mm. So try not to, it, it allows you to kind of almost take a meditative standpoint from it, where you're the watcher, you know, you're observing your thoughts, almost like that. Yeah. So you start to realize how like in control of your brain and stuff is when you are. <laughs> yeah. Which for me, I didn't expect either. 
Yeah. And I've done all like the power of now and so much meditation and everything like that. But looking till I started doing this, where I really started to notice it properly. Mm. And um, it's the whole creative side of this, which I think for so many children that are just dreamers, you know, can you imagine if they could learn about history or they could learn about science, but they can have an images that are going through their heads as their own like little superheroes like you do. Yeah. It's just going to make it so much more interesting and enjoyable for them. Yeah, absolutely. We've actually had um, uh, a student that was doing really bad from that, did the same sort of thing. Turned all this, um, all of the uh, the letters and everything in algebra into people, and then they were doing certain actions, and then he could remember all the formulas well. So he wasn't even remembering, he was remembering the formula, he was just remembering the scene from his own life. Yeah. And he was like, filled out the exams, like, yep, nailed it. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't matter what age you are, if you're six or if you're 80, you can still learn and benefit from these techniques. Okay. Are you doing any talks in schools? Well, we're about to, but mm -hmm. they're shut down for the next month. That's, so. that's correct. The whole world's gone <laughs> mad with the coronavirus. The coronavirus. Yeah, so at the moment we're focusing more on doing uh, corporate training. Okay. And maybe also private workshops for sort of 10 to 20 people. Um, but the main thing we're going more into is the corporate training. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Really interesting.